Hello guys and welcome to another TF only video and yeah that's how I look at uh, look like if you wonder the ever on the replays that I don't stream with cam on and upload today I'm gonna talk about something called Rod of Ages which every player should be familiar on not just TF players but why is uh, why it's particularly good on Twisted Fate and why Twisted Fate well build it generally and what makes it actually good in general so to enlighten for uh, to enlighten the audience or players that don't know why you building rod of ages i'm gonna go through some key points other than um, the normal kind of idea but i will tackle the generalization and the normal points today with this video so to start off it has linear scaling. Uh, what I mean with this and the uh, cost efficiency and base damage, I'll explain in a second. So the linear scaling is when you scale with TF and you get certain AP and HP and you scale accordingly to the game toward, uh, to transition to the mid game after your mid uh, roam impact and having a healthy amount of HP and damage to sustain yourself and actually stay alive and do other things in team fights which i will explain la uh, later on but the linear scaling is also due to the new runes as for example you're running comet or you're running gathering storm if the game pers if you think the game will proceed 30 minutes then gathering storm will outscale scorch so the linear scaling is for the comet individually and for um, uh, and for gathering storm sorry however for airy it doesn't really have that much but i will talk about that in another point coming up as to why i still build it on airy and why you can still play it with scorch so the next point is then cost efficiency obviously it's a 2700 uh, gold item and uh, it's pretty cheap and you need catalyst to sustain your lane generally against most champions and what i've learned is on the third point which is basic damage as to why twisted fate needs it or can get away by building it i'm i was one uh, of the huge pioneers on really weird stock builds like hextech gunblade on tf rfc and other things that i've tried out and uh, from judging from the past experience i misjudged the strength on on rod of uh, i just noticed in the video i typed rod on ages oh well, i'm not gonna redo it because it can't be arsed but sorry for that you might take a moment a lot of that i guess so what i notice with damage tf is if you go rod um or if you don't go rod the specific damage changes doesn't really change that much because it's your high level and base damage that's gonna deal early game damage until you have two items and upwards where it actually starts accumulating and you can see significant difference so snowballing with Sheen or Lishbane is cheesy, sure, but it's not really needed as you can use the Rod of Ages um, in the same kind of manner and even more so with the new runes that I'm gonna talk about coming up. But the cost efficiency and base damage on Rod is strong. And uh, that you can notice from just buying Catalyst and to start trades with champions in lane or try to punish them in certain situations which i will not explain in lane manipulation or trades and stuff because that's on a whole new level and it's not really why i buy the item but i'll try to explain it now as i come into the other portion of the points so the linear scaling cost efficiency and basic damage lead then to different trade potentials combined with Airy, Comet, Scorch or Gathering Storm. What I mean is 
when you have the rod of ages into catalyst or cost efficiency and basic damage for example on Arian Scorch it will allow you to exchange longer trades and proc Arian more frequently to kill them early on and since you will have the catalyst pretty much uh, really early levels on in lane you will have that buffered HP and you will scale with the basic damage and have even more HP so they might misperceive on how tanky you are and you will still be able to use more effectively Aerie to get a huger chunk proc percentage compared to any other champion you're facing let's say it's a Zed with Electrocute or Fizz with Electrocute you can still play that and proc Aerie even more because you're gonna stay alive even longer and what does, uh, what does this do then? Well, obviously you're gonna deal more damage just by staying alive and proccing Aerie. And that's one of the strong arguments of why Rod of Ages is really good versus Assassins. And why Catalyst is really, really strong early on. And why I think Rod of Ages has even more benefits than it used to any previous season. Which I started them building it and pretty much stopped going Glass Cannon TF. As it's called now for gathering storm and comet I already explained a bit but the general idea or consensus is you build rod you scale you have a safe lane you transition and comet doesn't really allow you because uh, to do that many trades you can still do some trades to get away with stuff one v one but it's not how the comet is intended to play because it's like you can proc it off a random Q and they will dodge it. Obviously you should still try to hit your Qs on the opponent while maintaining lane or manipulating it. But it's not a really strong case for it. It's more what I think an optimization when you can't trade or kill them with Airy. Where you know the exchanges are gonna be short lived. And they're gonna be really punishing and bad for you. That's why Comet is better and then... For the last point, as I said on Gathering Storm, if you perceive the game to be 30 minutes, then it's worth switching out, uh, switching out because you won't put on really early game emphasis. But you can use Scorch with Rod or Catalyst really efficiently, as I explained with Aerie. So the different trade potentials too is, for example, 2v2s or 1v2s. You can stay alive longer, you can play around the HP threshold, which I will explain in a bit. And you can pretty much do certain things that you wouldn't normally be able to do if you're playing Glass Cannon TF. Because Glass Cannon TF is pretty much hit or miss. And once the stun runs out, if the target doesn't die, well, you're pretty much gonna die. And this allows for something... I will then go into now as the third thing. Oh yeah, one sec. Uh, I forgot to mention or strengthen the emphasis on the base da uh, basic damage. Is the ba uh, the basic damage of TF. Actually, I should change that to base damage. I'm so off with this video. Should just make a second take, but uh, it's not really that relevant. Okay, so the base damage of your spells with Rod of Ages feels really linear and really good, and it allows for longer trades or more efficient ones. And then you also get the mana and HP to sustain a wave clear, which is obviously the most generally uh, generalized idea of TF. Playing passive, getting scaling, getting roams, but that's not why I'm building it, which is why I will try to explain this third point with everything I've else said before and the new runes to give an idea as to why I build rod and not using the generalization of other players going around of ages. So there's something I call outer and inner radius baiting. And Pretty much what this is with HP threshold and then I have Dopa mentioned is when you build Rod of Ages you try to still play safe and that's called the outer radius where you're just trying to be out of range, be able to dodge, you have no threat incoming but if you do you still have your HP threshold to survive due to the strength of these items. 
and you to the passive every time you cast a spell you gain 25 HP to me versus red smites and knights and stuff to outlet but um, the inner radius baiting is something Dopad really doesn't do or put emphasis because his style is played on clean and passive so he does everything in a certain perfection but he doesn't prefer much inner radius baiting what I've been taking out from analyzing his videos and see what I do different or what we do similar in our playstyles and how we approach the game so what this does with the linear scaling base damage and trait potentials when you apply the inner radius baiting of the strength of these items is I allow myself to be a decoy or willingly play more aggressive towards the inner where there's a higher chance of me being killed or stunned or targeted by any kind of spell of the enemy because I know I can use that added uh, HP threshold and I know I will rely a lot of my for um, foresight and predictions to be able to dodge and play around certain variables that are given to me through playing Rod of Ages so I'm not using it for a standard lane, I'm using it aggressively because I play Aerie a lot. I'm still using it aggressively because I play Comet, because I play Scorch. It, the only time I really use Rod of Ages as passive is when I combine Comet with Gathering Storm. Then I won't play in, into Inner Radius, I won't play aggressive 1v1s one unless the opponent is really bad and I find tendencies or stuff I can abuse in lane with. Then obviously the summon, uh, no, the new rune choices might uh, not be that efficient, but you can't really predict an opponent being really horrendous that you can kill him with Comet and Gathering Storm, uh, no Gathering Storm, uh, pre-10 minutes because Gathering Storm does gives you zero AP. It gives you eight at 10. It's like it doesn't really do a whole lot compared to Scorch, but if you manage to get the solo kill, well, good for you. And um, I would I want to put strength on the emphasis on inner baiting with Rod of Ages because I'm using it to gain this additional HP so I can prolong my trait. The and by by what I mean with that is when I find an opportunity I think I can kill the guy one by one. It's not like oh shit I instantly kill him one by one. No, it's a setup. It's a step process which you go one to whatever number you see in your head and you approach that number by setting up the kill so you're setting up the kill to potentially kill the guy or well he's dead one by 100 percent but you're never sure that's why i'm saying you're setting up the kill so you're using the threshold you're using the linear scaling of it you're using catalyst early on so you're using the cost efficiency and your base damage combined with the new runes to enable this trade potential you know that the trade can take up to five seconds where you're kiting him backwards and then you're engaging forward as soon as he think, uh, sees this trade is unfavorable for me well I have my second stun rotation coming up I predicted this now I'm gonna flash and kill you that's not a very uncommon situations where you pull them back into your minion wave you're using the added tankiness and then you're approaching them forward as when you predict them uh, a slight second before they actually think oh shit this trade is horrendous for me I'm gonna die if I proceed there no I'm already stepping forward I'm pulling my second gold card have fun you're gonna die 1v1 to TF which well should never happen but it actually happens a lot in D2 plus and I get a lot of solo kills I can't strength that enough on master D1 and D2 the amount of solo kills I get per game uh, it's not uncommon uh, in lane so I put strength on the emphasis in inner radius baiting and using foresight with this item not the general idea of uh, rod of ages as I've said so if you imagine like a circle uh, hang on a circle right then you're gonna play around that circle so you're gonna be pretty much around the entire circle but um, I play towards the inner or just the radius of the circle not the outer 
inner or just the radius? Because if I'm just outside of the circle, I can then use my judgment or foresight saying, do I need to step one step back or can I sidestep it and go inwards to approach aggression? And for me, it will actually do a whole lot. And that's how I use Rod of Ages and that's the reasons I buy them. If something was unclear and I didn't really enlighten you guys on the manner, uh, matter, not manner, sorry. Um, please leave a comment below and I'll try to explain in the best possible way that I can as to why I'm building it and why I'm not building it because, oh, Dopa's building, Dopa's building it. It's passive, it's linear scaling, no. I explained with the new runes as to why I think it's good now and to why I'm building it and how I'm using it. So this should give you an idea as to why I'm playing Rod of Ages, how I'm playing Rod of Ages and why I'm playing Rod of Ages instead of Oh, Dopa's building it, I gotta build it too. Oh shit, Grosker's building it. Well, well, I should build it too, right? Nah. Um, so if you like uh, my way of Rod of Ages and my way of explaining it, you can check me out on YouTube or you can come and tune into my stream on Twitch. I will always be happy to answer any questions and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So stay tuned for the next ones. I'm gonna make them. I'm making up more montages and uploading more replays. So stay excited for that and. If anything was unsure, just leave on the below comment section and I'll be sure to check it out. Thank you for watching.